Hey guys, better here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you all about the latest album from Shade Crown Ribbon, out October 11th on Inverse Records. This album has 8 tracks, 45 minutes in length, and this is the band's second full length album. For those of you not familiar with this band, they're from Finland, they're a melodic death doom metal band, and they released their debut record back in 2016. So there's been a, it's been a couple of years since their debut record has come out. Going into this record, I was really looking forward to see what they were going to do with this album. Uh, if they were going to have any pivots on the album, if there was going to be any changes to their sound, if there was going to be any different nuances, so then you could see perhaps a little bit of a growth in the band from their first record to their second record. At first glance, I felt that this album was a lot more mature. There was a lot more meat on the bone, it felt a lot more concise, it felt more, more linear, but at the same time it felt like they knew what they wanted and they went for it, and they never deviated from that path at any point in time during this record. The overall structure of the album feels, like I said, very straightforward. It's just an album that is very concise, it's very robust, but it all feels like one. There's no pivots, there's no changes, there, there's no switches, there's no ups and downs. It's just very linear, very straightforward as far as the overall structure of the record is concerned. The opening track, not until the end, to me is the perfect opening track. From the intro that the track has to the mood that it sets, and to the overall expectations that from a listening perspective are given, that track really sets the bar for what the rest of the listening experience is going to be about. For what the mood is going to be, for what the atmosphere is going to be, everything is done by that specific track. I really like that aspect of this record. This is an album that to me has a certain mood, a certain atmosphere, it's very melancholic in nature and sound. There's a darkness to it that just permeates throughout every single track. That to me is the consistent glue that allows this record to sound as one, that it gives it its consistency all the way from the first to the last track, allowing then each single song to have certain variations, either variations of structure, variations of sound, variations of approach, vocally variations, or even how they connect certain parts of the songs with different style of bridges. So there's all sorts of different variety as far as the individual songs are concerned, but the atmosphere that each song has is exactly the same track after track after track. And that is what gives it his robust nature to this album. That's what allows you to get lost in the record and almost lose track of what song is what. Because overall, you just feel like you're being hit with this wall of melancholy. That's exactly the feeling that you get the moment you sit down to listen to this record. And not until the end is the perfect opening track because it really gives you that sense. And then it holds it all the way through. I really like that. This is a record, in my opinion, that as far as drums and guitars are concerned, they really paint the major brush strokes as far as sound and emotion. There's other elements like vocals and keyboards, but I really feel like the drums and guitars coming together on this record are really the major players, at least one of the major players, as far as the melancholic sound, as far as the overall mood and atmosphere that this record has. They never deviate in heaviness and melody and, and, uh, and aggression. They have a, a way of combining those two factors together, combining the drums and the guitars together to work as perfect partners in order to give the right emotion to the song. The other partner is the vocals. I really like the vocals on this record. There is a certain despair to the way the vocals are coming at you. There is clean, there is harsh vocals, obviously a lot more harsh than clean. But this is a record that allows the vocals to be the perfect partner to that combination of guitars and drums. And the vocals are not only harsh, there's not only pain and suffering and despair, but there's this overall ruggedness to the way the vocals are coming at you that just adds a lot of emotion. It just really pushes the bar as far as that emotional ceiling that this record has to offer. And to me, that is the only way you can have a record that has this overall mood and not sound repetitive is to have certain elements that at any given time or any given track change who they are and what they're giving you. And some songs you get more of that feeling, that melancholic feeling from the guitars and drums, from the melody that the group both provide and from the aggression that both provide. And then some tracks it changes altogether and it's the, the, the feeling that you get from the vocals, the absolute pain and suffering that you're getting from that vocal delivery that does it for you. So I really like that combination. The other aspect on this album is the keyboards. To me, the keyboards on this record play an important role as far as mood as well and the atmosphere and melody, 
without ever taking control of the record and taking control of its sound. This is absolutely fundamental in my opinion if you're going to create an album that has this much darkness, that has this much depression to it. If you add too much keyboards and you put them too much in the forefront on every single track or on the majority of the tracks, whatever the case might be, it becomes too melodic and it's really hard for you to bring down that atmosphere, that mood, that to create that heavy presence. It's really hard to do that if the keyboards play a huge factor, a huge role as far as the overall melody and on the, in the structure of the tracks. The fact that they used it but not abused it. They really used it. They hit it in some, in some places. They brought it back out again. They really used the keyboard melodies to perfection in terms of not overusing them. Using them to set the tone, to give a little bit of, of a flavor, to give a little bit of a fragrance to the track, but never to be the guiding light, never to be the driving force on any single song on this album. I like that. If you don't do that, like I said before, you're not gonna be able to have a record this doom and gloom this this uh that's this uh, heavy emotionally you're not going to be able to do it it's just going to be very difficult to pull it off you can have an album an album that's aggressive but to have an album that's this emotionally uh, driven it, i would say it would be almost impossible so i really like the way they combine the keyboards into the songs without allowing them to, to dictate where the songs were going now as far as tracks are concerned i want to start off with not until the end which is a song that i mentioned already it's it's the opening track on the record it has a perfect keyboard intro once again talk about using the keyboard to set the tone to set the mood but not allowing it to dictate how the rest of the song goes this is a perfect example of that it really sets that melancholic tone at the moment the first note hits that's how this song works and that's why i really feel like this is the perfect introduction to the album Following that, there's an avalanche of sound and aggression. It really feels that way. It just really feels like escalating and it's moving towards you. The keyboard melody that stays in the background really adds a little bit of atmosphere to the song without really becoming a main driven aspect of the track, without making itself really noticeable. I like the fact that it drops more into the background. It becomes almost an atmospheric element and that is the perfect way to use the keyboards on the rest of this track. The atmosphere on this song has a lot more to do with darkness. And then you get that versus the light and brightness. And you get that from verses versus chorus. This is a song that has that kind of dynamic where the verses are a lot darker, a lot doomier. It just has a heavier presence to it. And then the chorus is a lot brighter. There's a lot more energy surrounding the chorus, almost outbursts of anger in the chorus. So I really like that dynamic. This really offers the song to have a, a really good fluidity between those two portions of the track and then when you combine that with that background keyboard melody that weaves weaves itself in through the track you have a song that has all the key elements to be a great opening track to, for this album and really setting the tone and setting the bar for what the rest of the listening experience is going to be like next song lifelong dying second song on this album and i'm just going to start by saying this my favorite track on the record I absolutely love this song. It has a great dynamic. It's a song that has a lot of moving parts. I love the combo of keyboard and guitar as it starts off. This is another song that has a little bit of an intro. So I really like that in this one, instead of going just with the keyboard, they change it up and they added the guitar to it. The combination of the two instruments playing the same melody really adds volume. It really adds presence. And at the same time, believe it or not, as melodic as it is, it adds a little bit of darkness to it. It adds a little bit of a sense of being uneasy about something. So I really like that. It really gives this very uh, embracing mood to the rest of the track, to what's going to come afterwards. After the second chorus on this song, the song picks up in tempo and it picks up in aggression until it climaxes with a solo. I love that structure. I love that fluidity. It's just a song that always feels like from the moment it starts, it's always building towards something. And in this case, it was building towards the solo. Then it dips back again and it starts the cycle all over again. And then when it finishes with the aggression, because the first time that it, that it went through the aggression, it climaxed. It climax with a guitar solo this second time around once the song recycles itself it goes through that same aggression but now it finishes the song abruptly it just ends it just cuts i love that i love the fact that they recycled the structure of the song but they gave it two separate they get in one they almost give it a bridge with a guitar solo and then in the second one they just cut the song off 
So I really like that. I really like the overall structure. And like I said, this is my absolute favorite song on the record because of the emotion that it carries, not only musically, but vocally. Last, Hate Reflected. Another great track on this record, a song that really alternates a more stripped down portion of the song with heavier moments. This is a song that has this, but it's so well interconnected, you don't really feel that you're coming off of one and entering the other because the two are so, so well orchestrated together that they just really blend one into the other. Like it, it starts off more stripped down, next thing you know is a little bit heavier. You don't even realize how you went from one to the other. Then it gets more a little bit stripped down again. It, it's just really well connected, really well constructed. And the, the contrast that it has, it's such a baseline contrast that allows those portions to just really perfectly intertwine with each other. At the halfway point of the song, it really picks up with a lot of aggression. Uh, and that to me, it, it's perfect because it almost works as a bridge. It, it, this song almost has like two bridges. One of them being that that aggression, that pick up and aggression towards the middle of the track, like I said, that culminates with a more stripped down portion of the song where the vocals just come in almost as a whisper. So it's almost like you have two bridges connected with each other or an extended one that has two separate condiments to it. But that whispering, that vocal whispering in that portion is so menacing, it's so dark, so doomy. I absolutely love that part of the song. And then the main piece of this song, in my opinion, is how one melody stays through throughout uh, while reflecting different emotions. Because there is a baseline melody that is present in this song from the moment it starts to the moment it ends. And all you get is different emotions throughout the track while keeping that same bass and melody line, just keeping it all the way through. That construction of the song was really what attracted me to this track. They, they were able to construct a song that feels at, at some points linear, but when you look at it, it's weaving all over the place. So it keeps, it keeps, it's almost like two parallel lines that you don't think they're ever gonna intersect, but at one point in time, they become one. So you have one line that's this baseline melody that you get from the beginning to the end, and then you have the second one, which is the constant changes, the more stripped down, the the, the heavier moments of the song, the, that whispering part. So you have all of these different moments that don't feel like they're gonna connect with the other one, but the moment you the song ends, you realize that both of them are one thing. They're all interconnected. Absolutely amazing the way this song is put together one of my favorites. If it wasn't for Lifelong Dying, this would be perhaps my favorite song on the record. All right, guys, this is it. This is Shade Crown Riven. Once again, out October 11 on Inverse Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles that they've released, and that's been three so far. So let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below, and I'll be reading those as always and getting back to you. Take care, guys.